there are species on our planet which won't be there anymore when you have children, and they definitely won't be there for your grandchildren. So it's something, again, very important. Our whole ecosystem, all living creatures are in there. So to take us through that, the, w one of the great, great organizations working in this field, would you please welcome the managing director of Wild Aid to the stage, John Baker. Thank you. Sorry to keep you waiting. The uh, airline had other plans for me today. Um, thanks to you, to you all. I, I think I can connect a few dots that I heard mentioned in the last couple talks. Um, just by way of introduction, Wild Aid is a nonprofit organization working to the end, end the illegal trade in wildlife. And I'll give you a short introduction to our work because I think pictures tell it better than words given the amount of time we have today. of the Pacific, animals that once thrived are disappearing. Fins from up to 73 million sharks a year are being used for shark fin soup. Manta rays are targeted for their gills, even though they only produce a dozen young in their lifetime. The world's wild tiger population has decreased from 100,000 in 1900 to an estimated 3,200 today. Up to 33,000 elephants a year are killed for their ivory. Over 90% of the world's rhinos have been lost in the past 40 years. These animals and many others have been trapped and killed, mainly for profit. The illegal trade in wildlife is estimated to be worth 10 to 20 billion dollars a year, with only trafficking in arms, drugs and people thought to be more profitable. Even with new laws and regulations, animals continue to die at an alarming pace. But Wild Aid is fighting back. Wild Aid is the only organization in the world to focus on ending the demand for these products. Our work has been focused in Asia, where the demand is the highest. Old traditions, once confined to a rich few, have now become available to hundreds of millions of consumers. We persuade people not to buy products made from these endangered animals. Using the same techniques as high-end advertisers, we deliver our messages with the same precision and quality, but we do it on a fraction of their budget. While they harnesses the power and influence of celebrity endorsement, our list of ambassadors includes over 100 celebrated names from around the world. From Oscar winning actors, Olympic athletes, and sporting icons, to business leaders, musicians, and other prominent figures. We rally pro bono support from the world's top advertising agencies. We assemble huge production teams at less than cost. And we deliver messages with the quality of the world's best television ads. And our partnerships with top networks secures hundreds of millions of dollars of free advertising space. As a result, Wild Aid is the leading environmental communicator in Asia. In China, around the Beijing Olympics, 55% of people remembered our shark campaign. Of those people, 82% said they'd stopped or reduced their consumption of shark fin soup. In 2013, China banned shark fin dishes from state banquets. By 2014, traders and media reported a 50 to 70% decline in the consumption of shark fin in China, with some fishermen in Indonesia and other countries no longer targeting sharks because prices have dropped too low. Wild Aid has reached hundreds of millions of people with the message, When the buying stops, when the buying stops, when the buying stops, killing can too. We need public and political will to pass effective laws and to make sure those laws are enforced. And we need to end the demand for these unsustainable products. To do this, we need to make conservation exciting and aspirational for people all over the world. And that's what Wild Aid Join us. Together, we can end the illegal wildlife trade. Thank you. And uh, apologies that the, somehow the videos aren't fitting on the screen. But uh, I heard earlier the mention that you know, we have to uh, make people care about the environment or you know, most people don't think about the environment. Well, this is our challenge in wildlife conservation, especially in, in a place like China or other parts of Asia, um, where there's actually quite just a low level of awareness about uh, the natural world and environmental impacts. 
So our campaigns are based on the idea of getting spokespeople who uh, are not already, who can get the attention of people who are not already watching the National Geographic shows or Animal Planet. So we, of course, in a place like China, would be working with, as you saw, people like Jackie Chan or Yao Ming or many others. Uh, we don't uh, necessarily have um, people like myself going in there and trying to explain why we need to do one thing or the other. It's much more effective to have uh, a, a rep, a creditable spokesperson who's in the community already. Um, so I mentioned Yao Ming, as you know, uh, or as you may not know, he was a famous basketball player here in the US, but in, in China, he's quite a legend. And he was uh, very concerned about the environment and the impact on, on wildlife. So he, was, uh, he ha helped to join our campaign. And uh, this particular ad that he did with us is one of the first, which actually made quite a big difference on the shark fin awareness in China. What if you could see how shark fin soup is made? If you could see how each year up to 70 million sharks are killed to end up in soup. Could you still eat it? A third of all shark species are nearly extinct, but we can help save them. The river, when the fire stops, the king can too. So of course we would do that in Mandarin, not in English. That's uh, luckily he's he's fluent in both languages, so we can do an English version too. I'm going to run through a couple more just to illustrate a few of our campaigns, and I'm going to wrap up uh, toward the end with a bit of a, a summary of how these campaigns work. So not only we have to hit these issues from many different angles, and not everyone's just going to care about the wildlife because they love animals. People also care about. Um, their pride or their health or other issues that this wildlife consumption issue can address. Some billboards, some social media campaigns. Um. There are plenty of ways to address it before. So it's true that uh, the number of people when we first started our campaign in China on shark fin, uh, our survey showed that most people didn't even know where the shark fin soup actually came from. In Mandarin, it's called fish wing soup. People didn't realize that they were killing sharks to make it. Um, and about 86% had, had no idea where it came from. 16% uh, of people thought the fins grew back. So it's been since then, with our campaigns running using these types of techniques, we, in the last two years, have done surveys showing that consumption of shark fin in China is now down by between 50 to 70 percent. That's in about four or five years' time. If you buy a rhino horn, you may be paying for more than just horn. You're paying for guns. Bullets. So unfortunately now, uh, in parts of Asia, China, and Vietnam, uh, people believe that rhino horn helps to cure various health ailments. Uh, we, our survey showed 35% of people in Vietnam believe it helps to cure cancer. Of course, rhino horn is made of the very same stuff, keratin, that is, makes up your fingernails and your hair. So um, we know it's not curing those types of ailments. And we just have a big challenge ahead of us to make people aware of this. Uh, so it's great to have the help of people like Jackie Chan, but we need as much help as we can get. 
And this is an ongoing campaign. Uh, over uh, 1,400 rhinos are being killed each year. There's only 20,000 left. Uh, most of the species of rhino in different parts of Asia are already almost extinct, if not already extinct. There's about, uh, the strongholds are left in South Africa and parts of Africa. And um, only when we can end the demand and, and reduce the, the profits that people make from selling the horns will there be less incentive for people to kill the rhinos. Imagine if all the people in the world could fit into one stadium. Sadly, all the wild rhinos in the world can, with room to spare. For some species, it's almost too late. But we can fill this stadium and many more if we can stop the illegal trade. Ask your friends and family never to buy rhino horn. And together, we can save our wild rhinos. When the buying stops, the killing can too. So uh, it helps to show the people of Asia, whether it's China in this case, that someone like Yao Ming, who's really uh, taking on a leadership role in his own country, is not uh, working on his own. So, so a piece like this shows that he's in the company. Uh, this is a global problem. We're not singling out China. Everyone has a role to play, and it really does elevate uh, his stature and when we work with other uh, spokespeople in their own countries and can associate them with well-known international uh, personalities, that also helps elevate the whole campaign and the whole issue and helps to, to bring it beyond sort of finger pointing. <laughs> So these campaigns don't only run on television, although we're lucky in China that we have been able to build relationships with more than 25 TV networks. So we are able to get our messages on the air um, broadcast. Our goal is to get them broadcast during primetime hours. And as the previous video was showing, uh, each year we are able to leverage about $200 million in free airtime and media placement. Uh, it's great to be able to have the TV networks uh, broadcasting our TV ads, but we also use a whole range of tools. So everything from bus stops to billboards in the airports to um, get you with, with the videos on the TV screens and the taxi cabs. And you can't escape us at the ATM uh, and even at McDonald's, uh, you won't be able to escape the message. So for those of you who have spent any time in Beijing or Shanghai or some other Chinese cities, you probably have seen wild aid adverts in the subways and the airports, etc. cetera. Um, here is uh, the largest video uh, billboard in the world in Shanghai, 40 stories tall. They pretty much run our ads pretty much constantly, and they all do it for free. And the key is that we're able to bring a positive message 
we're able to bring spokespeople that pe people are recognized and credible. Uh, we have high production quality, so the media that we're providing to them is something that they want to put on their air. Uh, it's almost like content for them. And the key to it is just keep continuing to build those networks and the partnerships and relationships with all these different outlets. And there's, a, there's all these boutique little companies that do the billboards only in this area or only on that subway line, and it's just a constant process for our team. We have 16 people in Beijing who are running this campaign. Um, so Yao uh, was a, is a leader not only um, as a popular personality, but he's also helped us to reach to 36 top CEOs, put a full page ad in the Beijing Times saying they're pledging never to buy ivory. He, Yao himself is a delegate to the National People's Congress. He introduced a bill to the Congress of uh, China to ban the sale of ivory. And I know we have a lot of young people here today, so I would be remiss in not including this most new popular um, cast of characters in our materials. Pause for relentless killers. It's not a fictional future. They are here now. They're not driven by hunger. They're driven by money. Money paid for ivory carving. And trinkets. We can't stop them with force. Won't we just follow? The only cure is to end the demand for ivory. You can help. You can help. Tell your friends and family to be ivory free. Be ivory free. Don't buy, give, or accept any ivory. And the elements will survive. Because when the buying stops, when the buying stops, the killing can too. The killing can too. So for those who don't know, that's the cast of The Walking Dead. I know some people are obsessed with it. Some people have no idea what it is. Um, and I'll just end by saying uh, we leverage all of this work and the work of these uh, uh, personalities who are working with us. We have launched a campaign called Join the Herd. Uh, 100,000 people have posted on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook their, um, their photo with an elephant. Um, millions of people have seen the campaign now. It's an ongoing thing. I encourage you all to join the herd. Thank you.